Oh yeah, uh, first of all, congratulations. Uh, two, two questions. Do you already feel like an Olympian or do you think it will like hit you more when you actually go, uh, you know, that you made it? And two, uh, talk us through the, the, the whole process. I, I saw an interview with you from, from Antwerp, but talk about the, the whole process of competing for the Philippines and maybe once thinking that your Olympic dream was over and now uh, it's a reality. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it really is quite set in yet and it probably won't until the next summer just because it's so far in advance that this thing has been scheduled, you know, compared to Team USA, how they schedule, it's kind of like a few weeks before the actual Olympics. So to be able to have the chance to qualify almost a year in advance before the Olympics, I don't think it's quite set in yet that I'm actually going to the Olympics. But following the competition, you know, it was it was a lot of scheduling that had to happen, you know, communications with the coaches, communications with my professors, because on top of competing, I'm missing two weeks of school. So kind of having to navigate all of that on top of training and on top of going, you know, I really, when I first started competing for the Philippines, I didn't really think that this was kind of a road that I was going to be able to take. You know, I competed in the Southeast Asian Games a year before last, and it was just kind of like a one and done competition. I was like, oh, like this is a great opportunity. Um, but I didn't really think that like, oh, this could be a road to the Olympics because prior to that, I, you know, I thought that that just wasn't a door that was going to open again. And to be able to, you know, get the opportunity in front of me, I was talking to the coaches and I was like, it's too good of an opportunity to pass up and being able to work with them, work with my professors to kind of navigate to, for a smooth transition for the competition is really, really special. It's kind of the same question I asked Jay. As far as the leadership, you and, and Haley really did kind of fill that void now that everybody's back and you have even more additions. What do, you, what do you think you all took out of last season that is usable still for this year? Absolutely. I think there was a, quite a few bit of changes that we have that we went through last year and we didn't really know, you know what it was going to take. But now going into this year, we know. We know what we have to do. We know that we're all going to have to be on the same page. We know that, you know, like Jay said, it's going to have to be a we over me and that we all have to be on the same page in order to get to where we need to go. And so I think that it's an incredible group of people. We're all incredibly talented. and. I think we all are on the same page and we know what we want to do to accomplish our goals and we're really excited, really excited for what is the upcoming season. Um, Aliyah, can you just talk about um, what skills you're trying to improve on a little bit, then also that switch from collegiate gymnastics to elite gymnastics, how you're making that flip, especially preparing for the season? Yeah, absolutely. I think kind of what Jay said, the, my skills are more or less the same. It's more just kind of, you know, repetitiveness, you know, working on getting those details, fine tuning things here and there. And on top of that, just kind of um, cleaning up and polishing stuff like that. And a little bit, it's a little bit different going from elite gymnastics to collegiate gymnastics. It's not throwing everything in the kitchen sink and it's more just kind of like taking the big picture and, you know, like I said, just fine tuning the details. Hey, Leah, um, competing for the Philippines, what does it mean to your mom? What does it mean to your family, you know, overall to just get that chance? Absolutely. I think it's it's such a special opportunity to be able to represent my mom and her family and our heritage as well. She made a huge sacrifice coming over from the Philippines to the States, you know, just going into a completely different country at 18, younger than I am now, is it's kind of hard for me to wrap my head around. And so to be able to kind of give back to her, give back to my family and give back to, you know, my roots is really, it's really special. What did, uh, what did you see in Haley? You know, we kind of talked, and it's almost like she's automatic at this point. Like, what do you see in her as a teammate and a competitor that you would like to emulate and think take away? Absolutely. I think Haley is just such a rock. You know what you're going to get whenever you come to her about anything, you know, whether that's in the gym or outside of the gym. She's just kind of a, a steady pull with all the winds and the ebbs and flow, like you said. You know, so she's she's an incredible person to go to inside of the gym, but also outside of the gym too. You know. If I need help on, hey, like, how do I do this homework assignment? Or like, what do I say to this, you know, professor? Or just anything that I need. So like, um, inspiration wise, you know, she's really just that stern rock that I can go to. Um, as you get um, older and into your later years of college, can you talk about how new girls like Connor and Leah, the cow them coming in has put you on this new level of teaching and having them run through? Could you just talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think we're, we're so excited to have them here finally. I think it's kind of been a long road, road coming. You know, I met them when they were the recruits, you know, trying to finalize that decision of where they wanted to go. But 
for them to be here and for that for us all to be on the same page it's really special and I'm, I'm trying to kind of you know give them a few words of advice that I wish someone had told me whenever I first came here obviously I had a lot of inspiration to look look up to when I first came to LSU but you know maybe some try to tell them some things that people didn't tell me and try to help them navigate because it's kind of scary coming in coming into college you don't really know what to expect you know you see the sparkly leos you see the big arenas but you don't see like, going to class every day going to tutorings and what practice looks like so just trying to help them navigate their ways through this we didn't tell you everything <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh, refresh your memory please did, did y'all when when sarah was an alternate for London. Did y'all go as a family? Did y'all, did yeah, y'all absolutely. So our family has actually been to the 2012 Olympics and the 2016 Olympics. So we went to watch and I'm seeing you know, we missed out on the 2020 Olympics. But so going into the 2024 Olympics, this will be our third Olympics that our family has been able to watch. I y'all, y'all going 16 just so you could go? Yeah, we went on, we went for a mission trip with us as well and then to just, you know, watch the competition. Um, like you said, it's a, it's a long way away. I mean, you, you, late, you know, late July, but you, have you allowed yourself to, to fantasize anything? That, have you have you imagined what it might be like to, to get on the podium or something like that to, 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 to get an Olympic medal? I mean, do you allow yourself to think about that at all? You know, you know, I, I don't ever try to conform myself to dreams. Like I said, just because you know, if you can dream as high as you can go. I've never really thought that this would be the path that I would take to get there. But absolutely, I think it's just so exciting when you think about. It. I think. Maybe a few weeks down the road, I'm still gonna wake up and be like, "Oh my goodness, like, I'm going to the Olympics," <laughs> just because it is so far away. But I'm I'm truly excited, just because I've just I've heard so many stories about it. I've heard about the Olympic Village, you know how that transportations work. I had the chance to meet um, Mondo Duplantis last weekend, and just talking to him about you know the Olympic Village and like gearing up for that. And so it's it's an incredible opportunity, and I think I'm gonna be excited for the next year leading up to it. <laughs> Twenty one year olds. What does 23 girls on a, on a roster look like? And, and how do you, as people on it, you know, kind of keep from backbiting one another and, and all those things? I think you just have to learn how to, you know, you're you're living with new people, you're in a new environment, you know, you're on your own for the first time. And so I think they're doing an incredible job of just kind of jumping right into the boat. You know, we, we left on a high note last year and so they're they're excited to go to go ahead for this year. Everyone's I think everyone's on the same page as as far as you know inside of the gym and outside of the gym as well. And they're an incredible group of athletes. I'm really excited for y'all to see what they have in store.